Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson with whoismatt.com and this is the Sony 24 millimeter GM lens. And today I'm going to be reviewing it from the perspective of a filmmaker. I know a lot of filmmakers are switching to Sony with the recent release of the a7S III, possibly you as well, which means that you are probably needing to invest in some native Sony lenses. And while I've seen a lot of reviews for this lens for photography, I have not seen many reviews for filmmaking. So today I'm going to do that. In addition, I'm also going to be comparing this lens to two other 24 millimeter lenses that are very popular, namely the Sigma and Canon 24 millimeter. And I'm gonna be telling you why this Sony lens is my favorite 24 millimeter lens available today. So if you shoot video with any Sony mirrorless camera and you've been considering picking up this lens, I hope this video helps you out. Now, the first thing that you need to know is that I really love the 24 millimeter focal length. In fact, the reason that I'm even able to compare this Sony 24 to the Sigma and Canon 24 millimeter lenses is that over the years, I've bought all of them. I've owned this Canon 24 for nine years and this Sigma 24 for five years, and I've used all of these lenses extensively. Why do I love this focal length? Because in my opinion, 24 millimeters is the sweet spot for a wide angle lens, which probably explains why basically every lens manufacturer has a version of a 24 millimeter lens. See, 24 millimeter is very wide, but not so wide that you get distortion like a fisheye lens. You still get great image quality, and in my opinion, this focal length is the perfect width for a gimbal. Also, most 24 millimeter lenses have a very low f-stop of f1.5. Four. But even though a low f-stop usually means a lens needs a lot of heavy glass to let in that much light, 24 millimeter lenses aren't very large and most of them are lightweight compared to other wide angle focal lengths. In addition, this small lens size means that 24 millimeter lenses can still use filters like ND filters, which are basically necessary in my opinion if you're a filmmaker. See, it's the sweet spot. Talking specifically about the Sony 24 millimeter lens now, let's talk about one of the first things you will probably notice about this lens and arguably something that makes it the most compelling its size. One of the reasons that I love the 24 millimeter focal length is that in general, the lenses are not that big, especially whenever you compare them to other wide lenses that have low f-stops. 24 millimeter lenses are known for being small, but even so, this Sony 24 millimeter takes it to a whole other level. Let's compare. Here's the Canon 24 lens, pretty small and compact. And here's the Sigma 24 next to it, pretty small too. Side note though, Keep in mind that all of these lenses have different mounts. This Canon is of course a Canon EF mount. The Sigma lens is actually a Nikon mount version of a 24 millimeter. And the Sony is of course Sony E-mount. I say that because if you put an E-mount lens adapter on the Canon and Sigma lenses, you'll see they definitely get a bit larger if you want to use them with a Sony camera. Lastly, in comparison, here's the Sony 24 millimeter. This little baby, look at it. It's so compact, it's so tiny. I was shocked whenever I first saw the size of this lens. And not only is it small, it's also very lightweight. Starting off, the Canon 24 comes in at 1.43 pounds. Tipping the scales, the Sigma comes in at 1.67 pounds. And here's the Sony, coming in at a lightweight 15.7 ounces, not even one pound. This Sony lens is such a joy to shoot with because it's so small and light. Whenever I'm filming, say, a wedding day, which is an all day event where I'm gonna be on my feet for eight hours or more, having a small compact lens on my camera can make a huge difference in my level of exhaustion by the end of the night. I love it. Now, thinking about the size and weight of this lens, you're probably thinking there has to be some sort of catch, right? First, you may be thinking the build quality has to be bad because this lens is so light. Is it all made of plastic? Well, from what I can tell, this lens is weather sealed and has a very similar build quality to the Canon and Sigma lenses. All of these lenses have a plastic housing with metal and glass internals, but Sony has clearly put a lot of work into making this lens smaller without sacrificing image quality. So let's talk about that image quality. You're probably thinking, Matt, there's no way this lens could be sharp. It's so tiny. I bet it vignettes a ton and at f1.4 it's super blurry, right? Was that like a Brooklyn accent? I don't, 
I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry to say you're wrong about all those assumptions because Sony did some sort of witchcraft with this lens. And not only is it very sharp, even at f1.4, it also has very little vignetting. Now I haven't done any super detailed scientific MTF tests for this lens, but if you want to see scientific tests of this lens sharpness, I would highly recommend reading the Lens Rentals blog about the Sony 24 millimeter, where they did a deep dive analyzing this lens's performance. To quote what Roger Sakela at Lens Rentals found, the Sony 24 millimeter GM is the best 24 millimeter made right now and really a world-class optic. High praise coming from a guy that looks at lenses all day, especially considering that he started a company called Lens Rentals, so you know he has some experience with lenses. In my real world tests, I agree with Roger. And I've filmed with this lens in a variety of scenarios and I've found it to be incredibly sharp with great image quality. Now looking at the competition, I really don't have any complaints about the image quality of the Canon or Sigma 24 lenses either. As I said at the start of this video, most 24 millimeter lenses will give you great image quality and the Canon and Sigma lenses are no exception. If you told me today, Matt, you have to go out and film a video with one of these three lenses, I would say, great, that's really easy to do. They are all great performers. That said though, if I had my choice, I would still go for the Sony 24 millimeter. And not only because it's so small and light, there are in fact other reasons that I love this lens, with one of the biggest reasons being autofocus. Who boy, the autofocus with this lens makes it perfect for a gimbal. Now, if you've watched my videos in the past, you probably noticed that I'm a big fan of manual focus. I made a video a while back about how to use manual focus lenses on a gimbal. Well, with the release of the Sony a7S III, things have changed a little bit. Because the autofocus is such a massive upgrade over my previous camera, the a7S II. And when you pair the much improved autofocus of the a7S III with this Sony 24 millimeter lens, it is a fantastic combination. This lens has Sony's newer direct drive SSM motors, which basically means it can focus super fast. And this is very important, especially considering this is an f1.4 lens that has a lot of glass inside that needs to move quickly. But it gets better because not only is this lens super fast when autofocusing, it also is virtually silent while it autofocuses, which if you're a filmmaker that has ever had your audio ruined by the sound of a lens focusing, this is a big deal. I've personally experienced this when recording video with Canon cameras using EF lenses. While most EF lenses aren't super loud, it is enough to interfere with the on-camera mic that I sometimes use for ambient audio. With this 24 millimeter, I'm confident that I can leave autofocus on and never have to worry about autofocus sounds interfering with my audio. With autofocus out of the way, let's talk manual focus. Even with the stellar autofocus you will get with this lens, there may still be times you want to guarantee a shot is in focus, so you switch to manual. Or maybe you're using an older Sony camera with mediocre autofocus like the a7S II, so manual focus is really your best option. I manual focus for years for that reason with my Sigma and Sony 24 lenses. Now when I bring up manual focus with Sony lenses, some of you may cringe a little bit because in the past, Sony hasn't been known for the best manual focus performance with their lenses. See, Sony lenses are all focused by wire, which means that unlike the Canon or Sigma 24 millimeter lenses, where if you rotate this focus ring, it is a direct physical connection to the focusing element inside the lens. Instead, Sony focus by wire lenses have an electronic connection, where if you rotate the focus ring, it sends an electronic signal to the lens motor, telling it to adjust focus. There are two reasons why focus by wire has sucked, with the first being that it usually means that the lens has a bit of lag when you manually focus. For example, my Sony 16 to 35 millimeter F4 lens here is focused by wire. And when I rotate the focus ring, it takes a little bit for the lens to register the movement and adjust focus. This is a huge pain if you're trying to nail focus because it's very easy to overcompensate. The other reason focus by wire sucks is that some Sony lenses, the 55 millimeter F1.8 for example, use something called focus ramping, where if you adjust the focus ring a short distance fast, it will adjust focus quickly all the way to infinity. But if you rotate the focus ring slowly, it will take a much longer rotation to reach infinity. This means that you will more often than not miss focus because you forgot got to rotate your focus ring at a certain speed. And this is just a pain overall. 
Dang, Matt, manual focus with Sony lenses sounds like it sucks. Well, hold on a minute, because the Sony 24 millimeter is a massive improvement in this area. There is no manual focus ramping, first of all, and second and more importantly, while this lens is focused by wire, there is no discernible lag that I've seen between rotating the focus ring and the lens adjusting focus. So for all intents and purposes, this Sony lens is just as good when it comes to manual focus as the Sigma and Canon. 24. If you're a manual focus junkie like me, you'll be very happy using this lens. We've talked about the build, image quality, and focusing abilities of this lens. And now I want to wrap up this review by talking about one feature of this lens that I feel like Sony included with filmmakers in mind. And this is also something that I'm sure you've seen in a lot of older lenses, but Sony is the only lens company that I know of including this feature in their newer photography lenses. I'm speaking, of course, about the ability for you to manually control your aperture on the lens itself. My Zeiss Contax lenses from 1975 offer this feature, and I love that Sony has carried it over into modern times with their new lenses as well. Set the lens to A, and you can adjust your lens aperture using the traditional dials on your camera. But rotate off A, and you will find you have full manual control of your aperture on the lens. Why is this a big deal, Matt? And why did Sony include this with filmmakers and Mind. This feels like more work to have to adjust the aperture this way. We'll check it out. On the other side of the lens, you'll see this switch that says click. By default, it is on, and as you rotate the lens aperture ring, it will click through each aperture number, stopping at each one. But turn clicked off, and you can now smoothly rotate your aperture ring, and this is smoother than if I dipped this lens in beard oil. This is also called a clickless aperture, and here's why it's a big deal. Have you ever been filming an important take and realized your shot was a bit overexposed? If you adjust your aperture on a traditional photography lens, it is going to click and abruptly change your f-stop possibly ruining your shot. But with this Sony lens, changing your aperture is completely smooth. You don't have to worry about your audience noticing that you made a small adjustment to your aperture mid-shot. You can be sneaky about it. Now, filmmakers that use cinema lenses have had this capability of clickless aperture basically forever. And there are even companies that will modify your photography lenses to make them clickless, but it usually costs a lot of money. I love that Sony made this lens with video shooters in mind, and they've included clickless aperture as an option with this lens. Wrapping up this review, let's talk price. This lens retails for 1,398 bucks, which is definitely not cheap. But considering everything you get in such a small and lightweight package, I think it's fairly priced, especially when you look at how much more expensive other Sony GM lenses are in comparison. Speaking of comparison, 1400 doesn't look so bad when you compare it to the cost of the Canon 24, which comes in at 1549. For context, I paid 1750 when I bought this lens in 2011. But comparing the cost of these two lenses to the Sigma 24, which comes in at only 850, yikes, that's quite a jump in cost. For that reason, I feel like you really have two options if you're considering buying a 24 millimeter lens. From an image quality standpoint, I've used the Sigma 24 for years and I still love this lens. It's quite a bargain at 850, and if you're on a budget, I would recommend it in a heartbeat. But for me, I wanted the guaranteed best autofocus I could get, which meant going with a native Sony lens. And when I compared the size and weight of the Sigma at 1.6 pounds versus the Sony at less than one pound, it's quite a stark difference, especially if you're carrying a camera around with you on a wedding day like I am. With that, thank you so much for watching this review of the Sony 24 millimeter GM lens. This is the first lens review I've made. Did you like it? Was it helpful to you? Do you want to see more lens reviews like this? please leave me a comment down below and let me know. Also, I recently finished a review of the Sony a7S III. If you wanna check out that video, I'll link to it up in the corner and down in the description next to the like button. Lastly, if you happen to be a wedding filmmaker like I am, you probably want to book more couples and film more weddings. To help you out with that, I've created a free guide that's going to walk you through some practical steps that you can take right now in your business to book more couples and film more weddings. It's a completely free gift to you. You can download it at the link down in the video description. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.